Have any doubts? Show of hands. <laughs> any doubts? Anything? Any doubts? Well, this Sunday, the second Sunday in Easter, is uh, the story, obviously, every year it's, it's of Thomas. And Thomas, as we are mostly, all of us, are taught in Sunday school, is known as Doubting Thomas. You know, I think he's the patron saint of every fifth grader who ever wet his or her pants. <laughs> and nobody ever forgot about it. And for the rest of their life, even if you won a Nobel Peace Prize or something, everybody's going to remember, you know, in the fifth grade, what happened. <laughs> Thomas had doubts. He wasn't there with the rest of the twelve. Thomas must have been an independent sort of fellow, because all of them were gathered and he wasn't there on that first night. So he says, well, I'm just not going to believe it until I see it. A phrase that we have in our language. And a week later, we get this story, and John is recounting this episode for us so that in this convincing scenario, Thomas, who's not remembered for this statement, but says, my Lord and my God, like I said, you win the Nobel Peace Prize, they're going to remember what you did in the fifth grade, not that you just won the prize. Thomas, the first among the disciples to declare, my Lord and my God. But John, in his gospel, records this so that we may know. And we might also know that you can do this through doubt. You know, if, if you're not completely taken by something that is quite wonderful and miraculous if you stand back from it and say, what, what just happened? That's a great phrase now that I hear among our grandchildren. Wait, what? Wait, what? My God, you hear that all the time. Wait, what? <laughs> you know, pay attention. Wait, what? So everybody's going, wait, what? Well, it's, it's part of us to have a little bit of, really like some more evidence. I'd like to see it, to believe it. The first thing God says to Moses, this is not in our lessons today. The first thing that God says to Moses from the bush, Moses has been herding sheep, convicted criminal, felon. What's he say? Take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. Now, let's talk about us. This is holy ground. It's been set aside, prayed on, consecrated by the Bishop of Atlanta, wished on and paid for, by blood, sweat, and tears of people who believe that Jesus Christ is something in their life. This is holy ground. You don't have to take your shoes off. Just bear with me. We have been called into something here. Set aside. And we have lived that witness for decades through lots of stuff. Shall I rehearse some of that? First meeting in a funeral home, then met in a rec center, then got burned out of the rec center and met in a outdoors in a shed that had been built down here and then in a decrepit old Methodist church for years. And this ground was set aside for us to witness once again, even though we might have some doubts as to what next season is going to bring, what tomorrow is going to bring, what my life is. I've got some doubts about that. But <laughs> the good Lord says, take off your shoes. 
You're doing holy stuff here. I got something for you to do. Believe in the mission of this place. For this is our holy ground right here. This is where we're called. This is where we're gathered. Got any doubts? Mm -hmm. Sure. But doubts are just one piece of believing, of convincing ourselves that God is working through us in ways that we can only imagine. And that through that work, through that work, we have the wonderful privilege of being together, struggling together, accomplishing together, and by God's grace, living out the testimony that Christ rose from the dead. As they say, that's the bottom line. We are witnesses to the resurrection. No, we weren't there. But because God working through Christ knew that everybody's going to need a little extra convincing, Christ appeared after this resurrection in various ways, and you're going to hear about those over the next several weeks. Frying fish on the side of a lake. Who would have thought? Showing up in a room where the doors are all locked. Thomas, check it. Check it, Thomas. It happened. I was real dead. And now I'm alive. This is that community. This is a community that can stand up and say, we're witnesses to the resurrection. And sometimes it's tough. And sometimes it's not clear and we have doubts. But don't doubt that God is working through this community for you to be resurrection people, all of us. You have done that for me. I know I was a bit of a sourpuss when I got here about a year ago, and I said, I'm just going to be here for a couple of weeks. Now I'm out of here. Don't. You know, don't get involved with me. I'm just here going to do some magic for you for a couple of weeks. Then the diocese is going to send somebody else in here, and you'll be fine. And I did that for two months. I wore you out with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think they could have pried me out of here after a couple of months. I know I had a lot of language about it, but let's move past that. It's, it's a privilege to be in this community. Good Lord. You're as close to me as my family. Closer than some of them, come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the place where we've been planted. And this is a place where we strive. This is a place, place where we can laugh and cry together and eat together and be that witness that carries on from that room where Thomas was bold enough and trusting in God enough to say, I gotta see something here. And God answered, Thomas's question. You are on holy ground. You have prayed it into being. And better than that, you live it into God's mission. And for that, you are God's blessed people. And you have a privilege of being together in this place. Now you're getting ready to enter into a new phase. And boy, what have we done in this, in this past couple of years? <laughs> I don't even want to rehearse it because it just seems like it was changing from week to week and month to month of what we could do and what we had to do in order to comply and keep ourselves safe and to be together. But there was a determination here to gather, to gather ourselves, and to be out there in the world through electronics, 
and to do what God had called us to do. So, disciples, count yourself as privileged. Privileged to be in this place and a member of this community. And privileged to be touched by the hand of God. It's no less than that. You've got lots of options in your life. And you've chosen this because it's true. Yes. Christ is alive. Amen.